Welcome to Pay to Play Impressions for Perfect Dark. This is the Xbox 360 game that came out in 2010 and Microsoft was a publisher, Rare was a developer. The game is playable on Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles because it's, um, well, it's backwards compatible. Well, these consoles are backwards compatible for this game. The game itself is a remake of an earlier N64 game that came out in 2000. And the game is a FPS with elements of stealth that relies on repetition of the levels so that you get them perfect. And I think uh, I'm going to explain that a bit more when, once I get into the actual game and I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, let's go into settings quickly and I'll show you what we have here. There's not much here. I do. There's, like I said, there's not much here because... Um, well, it's an Xbox 360 game, and at that time the consoles did not carry much in terms of visual settings, and unlike you know currently uh, that we have situation. So let's jump into the game, and I'll show you what the game is about. Uh, here we are. Okay. So here we have. Uh, well, first of all, we have three different versions of multiplayer mode, but it has to be a couch type of multiplayer. So people have to be sitting next to you. I don't think there is a multiplayer service uh, that has you know populated with people for you to play with. There's also a tutorial section to the game, and finally there's a solo missions, which is the actual story of the game. So we're gonna jump on, uh, jump, jump into here, and I see this first mission, and there we have three difficulty levels. If I select, let's say, the highest one, I have five objectives. Now, if I go out and select the next one, next uh, low, lower level of difficulty, I get four objectives, and so on. So as you see, the Number of objectives and number amount of a story that you get told at each level will depend on your difficulty. So if you want all the story to be told, you have to play it as a perfect agent difficulty. So the game kind of relies on you replaying it, uh, learning where things are, where the enemies are, and going from there. That's pretty much what I understood to be it, uh, the game itself. And for people who like that kind of a gameplay, I think this could be something that you're going to enjoy. For people who are not into it, like me, um, but, but there's also another reason why I don't want to keep on going playing through this game, and I'll explain that later. But uh, the, this might, might be not something for you, right? So let's jump in into the game itself, and we are here playing as a special uh, operations agent, and uh, we I'm going to go ahead and uh, need to actually need to go here somewhere here here here, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking this looking for this camera so that I can blow it up and there's another camera on this side it's to be taken out there we go all right it's uh, very much important so that the cameras don't see you so that uh, enemies don't get alerted uh, and you don't get swamped with enemies there we go this one out also the guard as you see I already kind of know where everybody is where the cameras are and so on. It took a bit of a few few tries and playthroughs uh, to kind of um, see where who is. And so, here we go. I'm gonna go pick up this gun and switch to it. So, there you go. Visually, as you see, it's an Xbox 360 game, so visuals uh, of that period. Uh, the fact that I play it on Xbox Series X uh, does not change the visuals in any way. The game just runs on it, that's it. That's, what, that's all you get. All right, let's open up and let's continue on through here. Actually, I should just do a different gun because you need to take out the camera that's up there. There we go. Now we can switch to this gun and we can crawl, go here and there's going to be a friend here that we're going to take out. There we are. Gonna pick up his gun, load its ammo in and then you're going to ahead and take out this camera like i said it's you know you have to kind of learn positions of everything so in order to do this perfectly the other thing that to mention is that the difference is that on the perfect dark difficulty level you aside an enemy there you do not have uh, a shield protecting you someone hit her You get him? There we go, we got him. Why me? Where's your gun? As you can see also the game helps me aim, which is very helpful.
because uh, I am playing with a controller, right? I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but uh, You're on the same floor as Cassandra's office. I actually skipped one objective. I'm gonna come back to it, but but uh, you know the fact that we had to deal here with enemies is what uh, kind of a change the how I'm doing this level now. Okay, let's get back to the first objective that I have to do. All right. So you gotta also pay attention in this game to other things. Like here, there's, there's a light switch here. Turn off the lights. Right? There's the other switches and things like that. The game will not point them out to you. You have to kind of know again, notice them and know where they are. And if you might not notice them, you might not be able to accomplish all the objectives uh, at, the, at the time. And then you're going to have problems. Switch back to the weapon. And let's keep on going. Are. All right. So, what are the themes in this game? Well, there's a certain themes in the game. Uh, let's uh, we'll switch the weapons again. It's just how I'm gonna use a weapon. And so, the themes are that uh, we have here good versus evil theme uh, that's uh, available. That uh, that's kind of being you know developed. It's a standard theme. There's a corporate greed theme as well as. There you go. Okay, that's the second objective right there. We're gonna go ahead and knock her out. Right. Also, the environments are, are destructible in this game. So, like I said, there's a corporate greed theme, and there's also. And there's also another theme of. Um, that relates, that I noticed that's kind of secondary theme more. Uh, that uh, relates specifically in the early sections of the game about AI and how do you treat AI? Do you treat it as a human being type of, or do you treat it as a program and so on? Like if it's, if it's a sentient AI, specifically. So this kind of the question that's being asked. Hey, you. There you go. Out. God damn it. There you go. Another one down. Right, let's see. reload. An enemy here. Come on, man. All right, took him out. Intruder alert. And above now you see that's my health actually being reduced because I'm not being fast enough or exact enough with my shooting. Switch back to our rapid firing gun. And what you're seeing right now is just this kind of a uh, simple uh, gun here. Right? Uh, there are other weapons in the game. There are there's like a stationary weapon, turret type of weapon that you can throw and uh, at the same time you can run around and shoot the enemies and it will kind of assist you with that as well. There we go, another one down. So that's something else to keep in mind uh, that you're gonna have. Uh, there's vehicles in this game. Get her. That, uh, that you can also... That also pretty interesting there. So overall, well, like I said, it, while it might look at first that uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple so FPS, it's not... Uh, Storyline wise, like, I mean, it's uh, it's a uh, we have um, an interesting storyline here. The problem is that uh, it kind of got ruined for me because uh, in the tutorial section of the game, there's actually a computer that has all the lore. And as I was reading the lore, I started to discover that I think I made it past the lore and into the story section of the game. So it's like things that are supposed to be happening in the future. So while I didn't read the whole story of the game to the end, I kind of knew enough so that I was not interested in replaying the levels and getting them in all this kind of perfect way. So that was a problem. But what I did like about the actual story is the fact that the character's name is uh, John Dark. And it's a quite clearly in reference to the name of Jean of Arc, which in French would be Jean d'Arc. Right, so 
if you consider the fact that the storyline is about uh, you helping political leader keep your power or consolidate your power to get your power so on like it's a, it's a bit more complicated than just like, what i'm saying it's, then it's kind of has references to that historical character who did pretty much the same thing so it's not exactly one for one retelling of john of dark uh, story but um uh, but it is a uh, kind of a referencing to that ah ah being very slow about this There we go, got him. The second one there. Ah, better aim, better. Come on. Come out, come out. I'm not doing that well here at all. There we go, alright. Generally, what else to mention? Uh, well, it seems to be that, uh... There's someone here. Yep, that's me. Okay. Overall, like I said, uh, all these elements that are in the game, the fact that the game helps uh, helps with aiming and so on, if you, if you add them up, uh, they do make this good game. And the fact that we have a variety of weapons to use and to... And to it also helps uh, with the fact, you know, with the, with the fact that uh, making it a good game. It's not just a kind of a bland uh, general weapons, guns, and so on. Uh, that they can, you know, distract the environment. So uh, that also adds to the story. And I believe, okay, quite often it's here, but I guess he didn't jump out this time around. There's an enemy here. Uh, it's disabled on the camera there. So, but no. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not gonna get this far in because I kind of down saying what I think I want to say. Like I'm, you know, just to say that about the coolness of the game. Well, interesting vehicles uh, we have here. We do have uh, weapons that are also very interesting and cool thing, cool ones like I uh, you know the gun that you can kind of drop it becomes a turret and so on. And the fact that you are playing as a secret agent, all that makes it a cool game. So overall, I think this is a good, cool game. Thank you for watching and for listening. If you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. And please follow and subscribe.